The mountains are a place where listening becomes possible. There are some days among them where you can hear everything, where the world quiets, it disappears. Somehow, at the same time, it hits you clearer than ever. The contrived clock fades away and you must listen to the sun. How will its rays play with the snow? How will the winds dance with these two? You've stepped into their room. Now will you dance too? There's a movement you must carry forth. It's been fostered and cared for deep inside yourself. So how will you let it out? With energy, of course, but with harmony, most importantly. On some days, that movement comes out in the most magical of ways. This day was one of those days. So the elk range are my home mountain range, and I'm beyond thankful to have had them growing up as a kid running around and getting into mischief and learning a lot about the mountains. They really mean so much to me. And it's definitely something we take for granted that these protected public lands stand as they do for us to visit and recreate in. Because these mountains in this wilderness, that is, you know, the Maroon Bells Snowmass Wilderness, hold such a special place in my heart, I've been trying to figure out a way to share its story. I do want to make a full film about it, but it's taking a bit longer than anticipated. <laughs> I guess filmmaking is actually a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> but anyways, I want to mention that story here because I think it's very important. Um, so back in the 80s, Three very strong women, Dottie Fox, Connie Harvey, and Joy Cadill, who founded the Wilderness Workshop, started this grassroots movement back in the 80s in order to gain a lot of support for the more than doubling expansion of the Maroon Bell Snowmass Wilderness, and this was accomplished by the passage of the 1984 Wilderness Act. I mean, they, they just saw the importance that this place has for our community and all the people that come and visit it, and they wanted to make sure that that stood there for future generations, um, like myself and you. So with these three fierce women in mind, I'm going to go immerse myself in these mountains tomorrow and going to go try to climb and ski three pretty fierce peaks. Nice little sunrise. Looking up South Maroon. Going up the east side, take the Y Kular. First objective of the day. Got my new X Ped Whiteout Pack. Sick. Doesn't weigh anything. Perfect for today. Let's go. In the grandest ballroom of all, amongst the souls of giants, there's no forcing your way in. You must ask to partake in the party, and continue to do so throughout. You must focus. You must listen. Move. Listen. Wait and listen. But never halt your movement, as that could halt the harmony. Focus. Listen. But don't fear.
there's no place for fear here among the giants. It's just you and them. So focus. Listen to them. Listen to yourself. It's just you out there amongst them in their world. So doubt must not exist in your mind, for they will know it does. Since it's just you, you must be absolutely certain. All right, on top of South Maroon, or Maroon Peak. Um, it's at roughly 14,150 feet. <clears throat> Definitely feeling the altitude a little bit, coming from Canada and Montana, where it's low. But um, yeah, beautiful. About four hours to get up the 4,700 vertical feet and 4.36 miles. So making good time, gonna head over to the east face and continue onward to the little brother, North Maroon. The little big brother, because it's a little smaller, but they say a little more intense. Cool, we just skied the east face. Time to just get to the top of the belt cord. Go over on the west side, check it out. Cheers. Love the fort vibes on the west side of the bells. Fort! 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 Since it's just you, you must be absolutely certain. Without a shadow of a doubt that this is not only possible, but meant to be so.
just about to the top of North Maroon. Uno setenta y tres. Rubia. Ojos marrones. Delgada. Veintinueve años. Incluso indicaron que no tenía cerrada la fontanela mayor. Según consta en la denuncia, la sacaron de su casa de noche. A los padres le dijeron que solo iban a interrogarla. Patricia, unos hombres preguntan por ti. Unos, 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 unos hombres. Muy nerviosa. Ella nunca decía Patricia, sino Pat. Unos hombres. Cuatro. Y vestirse. En el coche darse cuenta de que, con las prisas y el miedo, el jersey se había quedado al revés. Patricia. Ahí entonces. Patricia. 29. Años. Delgada. Marrones, uno, setenta y tres. Todos somos parecidos a los desaparecidos. La llevaron por la noche, la tiraron en el coche. Escuchamos los suspiros de la gente que no vive. Ahora no importa su nombre, ahora no importa su nombre. Somos parecidos a los desaparecidos La llevaron por la noche, la tiraron en el coche Escuchamos los suspiros de la gente que no vive No recordamos su nombre, se fue No recordamos su nombre, ¿por qué? La llevaron por la noche, la tiraron en el coche Escuchaban los suspiros de la gente que no vive Ahora no importa su nombre, llámala NN12 A lovely day! Woo yeah, all right, so I understand you probably are like, all right, what's going on right now? Um, so let me take you through it a little bit. Just skied South Maroon, first one. And then North Maroon is the east face off of south and the north face off of north, uh, roughly 5,000 feet into the day. So let me toss on the winter layover on the fat map because it just completely changes it from summer to winter, which is pretty rad. Um, so kind of started the day. Here you can see the Maroon Bells right here and went up the Y Kular of south up onto the summit, ski the east face. Went around to the west side of the Bells, which was probably the diciest part of the day, honestly, just because the winds were coming from the west and everything was like really, really hard. And so traversing over there was rather difficult to grab an edge. But essentially what happened, you can see right here, if you look a little closer, um, I came up this hidden Kular of North Maroon and popped out on the summit and then skied the classic line, which is the North Face right here. And there are three magnificent mountains kind of all right next to each other. You've got Pyramid, South Maroon, North Maroon. And these mountains are insane because 
they offer so much vertical relief from the base and below. If we just toss on a little elevation gradient, you can see that down here in the basin is 10,000 feet. And then up at the top of these peaks is 14,000 feet. So that's 4,000 feet of fall line skiing. So now where we're at in the day is I wanted to link up Pyramid with the bells as well, which is known as the hat trick. And this was the trickiest part of the day because it's the latter end of the day and wet slides are starting to become a concern. However, the sun has shifted over to the west side, so I'm planning for things to be corny. Something you can't get with other mapping applications, which you get with Fat Map, is extremely high three-dimensional resolution so you can actually see what these places look like and I do know these places super well so I kind of understood what the actual concerns were of the day but with things warming up in the sun in the western I guess the sun pointing on the western aspects of these mountains you can see that the line up the western side of pyramid is a straight pinnacular for roughly like 1,700 feet, it's a direct pinnacular, but there's a snowfield at the top of that. So if you're climbing that and you have a risk of warming, that snowfield could completely rip on you. Thankfully, I started headed up, heading up around 1 p.m., uh, maybe around noon, and was paying really close attention to how the snow was changing as I was gaining elevation rather quickly up the west side of Pyramid. And it was rather corny down low, around 10,000 feet. Pretty corny, still at 11,000 feet. But then once I got around 12,000 feet, things were actually stiffening up quite a bit. And then once I popped into the Kular, things were like hard. And the wind was also blowing from the west. So I knew that that snowfield above me wasn't a concern of the day because wind is a key consideration when you're thinking about wet slides out in the field because if something is having wind blown on it, it's not gonna heat up, um, not gonna heat up as quickly. And so I knew that that snowfield wasn't gonna rip on me um, from a wet slide. And so I proceeded onward. As the day progresses, the light shifts, your rays turn another direction, closing off one side of the dance floor and opening another. You must follow the change of light. It's late into the dance, and your steps may begin to falter, but they must not miss a step. Reach outwards and ask the giants amongst you to pass their energy on to you. It may not happen all at once, so you listen carefully, with weightless movement and unbroken focus. They answer, and you find yourself in the most unique of places. Skyline from the Pacific. 
I'm really stoked that I just skied. South Maroon's east face, North Maroon's north face, and then the west face of Pyramid. The dance is done, and your steps will wash away as the sun, wind, and snow continue their dance as they always do. What can we do to ensure this marvelous dance lives on? I mean, this marvelous dance must go on. But it's being compromised. Um, the Elk Range means so much to me. They're, they're my home mountains. So it feels kind of like the best time ever to talk a bit about how they're changing. This past season, we actually had 13 dust on snow events, I think. The gist of it is that dust from farmlands and occasionally mines gets picked up by high winds and then deposited onto the mountains. And what this does is it essentially makes the snow a darker color. And so it melts off quicker and compromises our water system. But it is due to kind of improper agricultural techniques and is also due to increasing winds, which is a result of climate change. So why am I, some skier driving around all around the country, burning an immense amount of fossil fuels by just pumping gas into my van and telling you what to do? Well, I'm not really here to tell you what to do. I'm just here to share what I'm trying to do. So maybe you can try to do something too. I wish I had an electric vehicle to go to all of these places that I just simply can't afford an electric vehicle right now. But I've purchased carbon offsets for all of my gas, food, the one flight that I took throughout the trip. Yeah, try to combat some of the carbon that I emitted into the atmosphere. 
So if you can't buy a solar panel for your house, you can invest in a company to buy a solar panel for a building project that they're working on and you'll see the benefits of that via contributing to this. Think about the things that you consume and try to consume a little bit less. But if you buy some carbon offsets, then it's like, oh, the goodness is rising and hopefully it all levels out. I mean, the reality of it all is that we all want to keep adventuring. Like, we're a curious species and we're not going to stop. And that's amazing. Like, being perfect is never going to be in the cards. So let's not strive for perfection. Let's just try to progress a little bit. Like, perfection is not the way. Progression is the way. Where does that progression start? Well, systemic change in the environment starts with policy. And the strongest way to help this progression, because we'll never reach that perfection, let's be honest, is to vote for these policies. So midterm elections are finishing up next week on November 8th. So if you haven't voted yet, I strongly recommend you go vote. If you don't know where to start, you can definitely join Team POW, as in Protect Our Winners, to learn more about where to go vote and what policies are especially important. Um, and if you're watching this, you're probably young like me and not very many young people vote. It's like 40%. So you should definitely go vote because that's kind of the say that you have. And it's really important for positive things to happen.